I live in Ottawa, Ontario. Which is like 100 kilometers from the border of the U.S., okay? Canada and the United States are like basically the same place. Or are they? I'm closer to the U.S. than New York is to Philadelphia right now, and I'm in a different country. Because we're so close, you think there wouldn't be a big difference in our mental health, right? Based on the few Google searches I've done to write the intro of this video, I literally cannot tell. Before I spill the beans, join me on this journey as I try to figure out who's more mentally ill. I was gonna break this down into like multiple categories, like I was gonna have some anecdotes, some raw data, some, some f***ing interviews, but I figured it's best to just do this by the numbers, like try to find the most objective measurement of who is more mentally ill. Now, the first thing I've noticed is that the metrics used in all these studies are like all completely different. This study goes by years of life lost from mental illness. Canada does not even come close to the US. A lot of them put the US in the top 20 for mental health. And then this one puts it at number two globally for mental health, only behind Ukraine. In my confusion, I found this really interesting article by The Guardian that goes against the widely held belief that mental health problems are like this ever-growing epidemic of, of Western society. I put these glasses on, I hope I'm not going all like Gundo Okari on you. The author uses this chart to show that since 1990, adjusted for population, mental health diagnoses have only gone up by like 1%. And that tracks with this other chart I found, which says the same thing. Adjusting for population is super important. Since 1990, there's been 2.2 billion more people formed out of the goo. If you look at the numbers, where about 10% of the population was mentally ill in 1990, that means there's 220 million more mentally ill people, even though the proportion of mentally ill people hasn't really gone up adjusted for population. This is all interesting, but does not help answer our question. This chart, which shows an exact comparison, there's very little difference. This chart, which also shows very little difference, chalks up the rise to a use of mental health services and not actually increasing diagnosis or mental health problems. Comparing suicide rates. The most relevant data I could find in 2009 puts Canada at 11.5 suicides per 100,000 people and the US at 11.8, not a big difference. Another side note, talking about biases in statistics. I found an example when I was looking for drug abuse stats that said 60% of Americans abuse drugs or alcohol. I'm like, that's a fucked up number. That's like hundreds of millions of people abusing drugs and alcohol. The study this chart uses includes people who have consumed consumed alcohol in the last 30 days. So it's putting people who had a glass of wine with dinner two weeks ago in the same camp as crack addicts. This kind of data is useless. It doesn't help any- It's almost like the data is trying to convince people they're all mentally ill and addicted to drugs. And it's some sort of conspiracy so that rehabs and pharmaceutical companies can make more money. Now, on the topic of drug abuse, I looked into opioid overdose deaths. Simple enough. In 2020 in the US, there is about 68,000 opioid overdose deaths compared to Canada's 4,300. Adjusted for population using this formula, that puts the US at about 20 opioid deaths per 100,000 people compared to Canada's 11. Now we're f***ing getting somewhere. Now we're finding a difference. Again, the problem we've been running into with the different metrics used, you know, it's, is it, is it diagnosis? Is it people using mental health services? Is it people prescribed psychiatric medication? Look, I mean, I could have two therapists and be crossfaded on Zannies and Perkies by the end of this week. And that does not make me mentally ill. Despite all of that, I have found a metric which will actually help us. And that metric is deaths of despair. Deaths of despair refer to preventable and behavioral related deaths, like overdoses, but also suicides and liver failure from alcoholism. It's, it's, it's a nice umbrella of like all the ways you can fuck yourself up. Oh, this video is getting a little dark. So here's the moment of truth. Based on a journal published in 2018, heavily cited from the Canadian Medical Association Journal, I found the US is much worse like 30 to 50% worse. According to this journal, deaths of despair counted for 30% of all deaths in the 19 to 49 age group. And that's an increase from 20% in 1990. That's a 50% increase in behavioral related deaths. And in the US, deaths of despair also disproportionately affect poorer people. And also contrary to Canada, the US has a rising suicide rate. This is such a big issue that these researchers have attributed deaths of despair to a lowering of life expectancy. The first time the life expectancy has been lowered since 1950, the average lifespan has declined mostly in part from people drinking and doing drugs and killing themselves. That's really fucking dark. In Canada, suicide rate is going down. Deaths of despair have gone up since 1990, but only by about 25%. And things like alcohol abuse proportionally affect all income levels, interesting enough. The reason behind this difference is kind of puzzling. And even the researchers state in the article that like they can't really pinpoint the exact reason why the US and Canada are so different. The biggest culprit seems to be opioid deaths. The US and Canada are first and second respectively for opioid overdoses globally. But the US is still 50% higher than Canada, which explains the 50% higher overdose deaths 
stats we saw earlier? That's not good enough. That doesn't really explain the bigger picture here. Globally, the US and Canada are seen as the same place. I'm Canadian, I have a fucked up accent. But I could walk around New York and no one would be like, oh, that's a fucking Canadian, you know? How can two countries that share a border with similar GPDs and very similar culture have such a big difference? Remember in the beginning of the video when I suspiciously said, or are they? Or are they? This is what I was referring to. Most Canadians live within 100 kilometers of the US border. Like, it does not share similar problems that southern states like Alabama do. And that's where things differ. You know, when you're talking about cities like Memphis, rural places like Appalachia, there is no Canadian equivalent. Like, there is millions and millions and millions of disparaged people in the US. Go to Street View right now and look at Detroit. Detroit's f Look at Memphis and St. Louis. St. Louis had the highest murder rate. It's like similar to like Central America. This isn't to say Canada's flawless. There's a lot of places on the East Coast that aren't doing too well. Our northern communities in Nunavut and, and Northwest Territories, high suicide rates and drinking problems. And that's on the Canadian government. We should be able to fix that. Those places don't account for like millions of people. You know, it, it, it's things like income inequality and a lack of universal health care that really separate Canada and the US. Based on my research, that's why the United States are more mentally ill than Canada. Thanks for watching. I'm Sea Salt Moses. I'm happy to be back. That's like the fourth time I've said that in a video. I'll see you next Monday. God bless.